I have been a Londoner for 15 years. When I arrived here, I had nothing. Now, I have a job, a family, a new life. I am not alone. Hundreds of thousands of Somalis are here for the same reason. It's a safe place after fleeing a brutal civil war. As the immigration debate rages, we are the people politicians love to hate. Somalis love to chat over a cup of sugar tea. In cafes like this up and down the country, we share stories about home. But the one thing we never talk about is how we all got here. But now it's time to tell my story. I'm retracing my steps from 17 years ago. A journey across half a continent. Penniless, in constant fear, crossing borders, evading capture, dependent on the kindness of strangers. This is just one migrant's story. I am an immigrant. I am a refugee. I am an asylum seeker. I am also Jamal Muhammad Osman. I was a teenager in 1996 when I left Somalia for South Africa. Like thousands of others, Kenya was my first step. I left home because I witnessed unimaginable horrors. I survived a massacre and was traumatized. I had to get out. Getting to Nairobi wasn't difficult. I just took a bus. My cousin gave me a place to stay. My cousin said to me, why are you going so far? Why don't you stay here? He he tried to convince me to become a mechanic. I didn't fancy. I, I don't think I would be. Uh, I didn't think I would be a good mechanic anyway. So, uh, and I said no. Obviously, I was sad to leave my family, my hometown, my people, the friends I grew up with. But at the same time, I realized staying there was never going to give me any chance to improve my quality of life or to feel safe. But I thought I'll try somewhere else. Sometimes when you have nothing to lose, then you just go for it. For African migrants, South Africa is a major destination. Asylum is guaranteed. Passage to Europe and America is possible. Nairobi is at the center of East Africa's human smuggling trade. Smugglers run complex and secretive operations all the way to South Africa. Business is booming. Prices are four times higher than in my day. In South Africa, it's the best. It's the best in Africa. South Africa. Crammed into a tiny hotel room, I met a group of Ethiopians. They've paid 1,500 pounds each for this journey. It's all the money they have. All of them are dreaming of a new life far away from home. Just like I was all those years ago. I showed them my photo. It was 1996. They couldn't believe how much I have changed. <laughs> it's me. When I was, I was younger than you, I did the same journey like you. Do you want to do the same thing? You want to go all the way to South Africa? Yes, I want like this idea. Like you in a... More than this. Yeah. More than this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what, what do you want to become when you... When you engineer. So you want to become an engineer? Mm. And you? Doctor. Doctor? Mm. Uh, and you? Gastelier. Gastelier. Journalism. Journalism. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Doctor. Doctor, and you? I'm pilot. Pilot? So pilot, doctor? Mm. Doctor? 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 Engineer? Engineer. Journalist? Yes. Okay. In the next room, I met Fatika and Tastu. Tastu on the right has left behind six children with her family in Ethiopia. Her husband's waiting for her in South Africa. If all goes well, their children will join them later. Done it. Yeah. 
It's time to go. The group has to move quickly. The smugglers have waited for the right officials to be on duty at the border post. Officials they can bribe. The women are put on a local bus. No wonder they look anxious. Horror stories of rape are common on the road ahead. I agreed to meet all of them on the other side of the border in Tanzania. It was too risky for me to travel with them, so I took a different bus. 17 years ago, I was traveling illegally, just like them. But this time, I'm traveling on a British passport and everything is different. Borders dissolve and visas are granted. That night, we were expecting to meet up with the Ethiopian group, but they weren't there. Hello? Just before midnight, I got a phone call from the smuggler. Yeah, 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 smuggler. <laughs> Some of the migrants were arrested between Namanga, the border town, and Arusha. So the main guy, their boss, who was smuggling, had to try and get them released, and he's hopefully he will get them out. In the end, they didn't make it. They were all sent back to Kenya. Many dreams collapsed like this very early on the journey. Tanzania is notorious for cracking down on migrants. Checkpoints are everywhere on the road to Dar es Salaam. If migrants are caught, they can spend years in prison without trial. This was the exact road I took last time and it was bringing back horrible memories of traveling alone. There was a lot going on inside me. There was a lot going on inside me. And not knowing what would happen, what could happen to my family, what would they think about me if I disappear, if I die. The farther you go, the more you become anxious. One of the biggest worry for me was dying on the road and my family not knowing whether I have died or not. And then there was no mobile phone or no communication at all. If you disappear and, and you know they, they love you and they would be looking for you for the rest of their lives until they find your body, which they would probably not find. So it was not an easy journey. <laughs> After Nairobi, Dar es Salaam is East Africa's second biggest transit point. Huge numbers flow in and out of the city every day. For migrants, it's a major stepping stone on the road to South Africa. But some people can get stranded here. I want to meet some of those who are stuck. All of them are Somalis. I found them settled down watching a game of Premier League football. Spurs versus Everton. These young men are a mixture of tenacity and desperation. But there is one of them who thinks South Africa is a bad idea. Muhammad's brother was murdered in Cape Town two years ago. He doesn't think it's safe for migrants there, but his friends dismiss his warnings.
I left Dar es Salaam and got back on the road, heading south towards the border with Mozambique. It's as remote today as it was the last time I was here. I think when you're in a city, it's bustling, it's busy, but it's that quietness, a moment of reflection that you you look back and you think, why am I here? You feel you're halfway through the journey, I must keep on going. When you're in Kenya, you see Somalis, and even in Tanzania, you see Somalis, in, in Dar es Salaam, and I think the father, I went away from home and family, the more I felt pain and loneliness. So I would say reaching this point and being around here in Mutuara where I couldn't speak with people. There weren't that many people I could understand or communicate with. Uh, yes, I felt lonely. 17 years ago, when I was making this journey, I remember standing on this beach and feeling so low. I was still only halfway to South Africa. I didn't know if I was going to make it. 